Hey guys, Ali here. How are you doing? Welcome back to A Layman's Insights. And, of course, another episode of Disco Elysium here. They've been making some good progress over this game recently. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, we're going to pop into this tent again and try and uh, get these guys to help out with the sound system that they have so that Suna can get her work done and then be out of their hair as quick as possible. So I'm going to pop in and leave, uh, leave Kim outside. He doesn't like delinquents very much. All right, let's do this. Hi again. So, uh, how are things going? Wait, who would I talk to? I know Noid has his signs, but what's the deal with Egghead there? He's a quiet man. Mostly communicates through music. Oh. By being a master of ceremonies. Oh, what's a master of ceremonies? You know, a host. A declaimer of slogans. He's a performer. Oh. Gets the people going. Okay. Interesting, sire. A bit like you, then. And... MC for short. I don't think I've ever known what MC means. Music coordinator? Mm, nah, probably not. Uh, let's see, how do you communicate with him? Well, he's just kind of here. I don't really know how to communicate with him. <laughs> Have you ever really talked to him? Yeah, sometimes. When I, like, stumble and find my way into his centre, you have to hear a lot of Hardcore to the Mega first, though. Okay, then. The man smiles mysteriously, choosing to let the beat speak for itself. I get it. He's a puzzle. I'm here to talk about the church again. Yes? What's the deal? Okay. Good news. I managed to convince Suna. She's okay with you guys moving in, but on one condition. She needs your speakers for her project. We are grateful, Cotman. You're a true ally and the augury of a new era of a nodding dance music. The speed freak smiles, happier than he's ever been before. You're going to have to share space for a couple of weeks until she gets her research finished. That's fine. We can manage. He grins, excited. And you're still sure about keeping our little side business, right? No, 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 no. Oh, you mean the illegal drug lab? There's, there will be no shady shenanigans in the church. Only love and an, an, an anodic dance music. Fine. We can make do. It's going to take us a bit to move our stuff inside. A couple of hours, maybe. Come check back later. Let's get moving. Andre waves to the other speed freaks. All right. Okay, so the tent is gone. Uh, some time has passed, but I don't think it's... It's only been like an hour, I think. Oh, no, wait, I'm going the wrong way. There's a bridge right here. What's going on here? Did I get new stuff? Oh, yeah, the new tie. Yeah. Brilliant. Helps sooner. Check up on sooner after the reavers have moved in. Have they moved in yet? I don't think they have. So I, I think I may be able to go and do a couple of other little quests. Oh, or, or, I'm going to check out that bunker. Yes. Hey, I don't think these guys will be ready yet. He said a couple of hours, and I'm sure only about five minutes passed. Man, they, they packed down that tent really quick. I've never put a tent away that fast. I don't think anybody has. Right, let's find this bunker again. Not too far away. Oh, auto save. There we go. Let's uh, knock on the door, see if anybody's at home. An old door, worn by elements, guards the depot. The wind has blown a oh. sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. What is this thing anyway? It's military. A service depot of some sort. You used to service what? The washerwoman mentioned a depot at the coast. Oh. She said it was for moving ammo and cargo across the bay. 
This it, might be it. I'm not going to be able to get that open. Let's walk away. All right. Um, well, what quest to do next? Oops, I didn't mean to run there. Let's have a look here. I think we're gonna be, we're, we're kind of knocking these two out at the same time, so that's good. This I hope hopefully will be progressed by the fulfillment of these two. A cell. She wasn't there. She went away again. Okay. The last trap was empty. Return to Morel. Okay. Well, we need to go back to the. For, for this one here, and for this one, we need to go back to the cafeteria. So we'll uh, quick travel to the cafeteria, if I can. No, not from here. <clears throat> I think I need to be in front of the church. From here now, maybe? Yeah. But which one to do first? Which one to do first? By the time we've fulfilled these two objectives, we should um, have wasted enough time to go back to the church and see how the setup's doing. I'll talk to him later. I'm going to talk to him now. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, yeah, that's the assistant guy. It's great to see you again, officer. My wife can't wait to thank you. Go on, talk to her. Oh, and you talk to the wife? Okay. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Um. Just doing my job, ma'am. Here, I want to give you a small token of my gratitude. Ooh. It's a tie. Mesk in origin. The pin is an antique. Quite special. She's always given me stuff. At the beginning of the game, she gave me a, pe a pen. Yeah, a green pen. And now I have a scarf from her. Very nice. The little silver a tie, sorry. Holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. Okay, let's get a little bit more cryptid information from her. She's got you know, stuff. To hell with it. Let's have more creepy. Yes, Kim is on board. We're doing this. Of course, officers. Oh, okay. Is there a particular cryptid you two are interested in learning about? What's the biggest? We asked about the tiniest cryptid already. So what's the biggest cryptid? That would be the giant of Coco Nur. Ooh, she says as if it's common knowledge. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Coco Nur desert in South Samara. Casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Wait, what do you mean by strange light? Um, mirage or a psychogenous luminance. She does not elaborate the nature of this luminance further. And just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. That sounds pretty big, especially if it's at distance. Is it dangerous? The towering luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Oh. Some say it's a Fata Morgana. Others, fate unimaginable. Puya. No animal can be that large. Ah. It's a mirage. That's what makes it so peculiar. A species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see, to how large a metabolism an ecosystem can beget. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. Well, gravity anomaly... Digging it. Digging this parascientific stuff right here. <laughs> okay. What's the most dangerous cryptid? The gnome of Jeroma. Ah, it sounds harmless. It's a gnome. That doesn't sound too bad. Oh, it is. 
None of his victims survived. Oh, crap. Grieving relatives never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. What did this cryptid look like? It was, reportedly, a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. Damn. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. Oh, so it was dead then? Oh, maybe there's more than one. Maybe there's more than one. Yeah. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks confirming the existence of this very little species? Kim, don't be a hater. Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Hmm. Instead... All the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. She says mostly to herself. Alas, always alas, and then it was gone. Isn't that overly convenient? No, it's a perfectly good explanation. Stop being so skeptical. <clears throat> sure. A perfectly good explanation. It dissolved in its own venom. Go on then. Ask about more gnomes or whatever. I will. Let's see. Mm. Is this a cryptid on this pen you gave me? Yes. It's the kind green ape. Half war story. Half undiscovered species in the genus Homo. War story? Yes. It was reported by soldiers in South Safra. During the war, the kind green ape would visit bunkers during the night, healing wounded soldiers with its saliva. Wow, with its saliva? Yes, it has amazing healing qualities. Some soldiers reported growing back limbs, regaining their sight. And there was something about an undiscovered subspecies of man? Indeed, there is. It's our closest relative among the cryptids. Same taxonomic family different genus is is it not genus i i don't think i've ever heard that word i've, I've ever i've ever seen that word like i've uh, written down oh which is to say the kind green ape is a species with which we share a common ancestor and that evolved parallel to our own just like your partners I knew it, Kim. You're not human. Ma'am, you are confusing him. <laughs> yes, yeah, she is. Please don't misunderstand me, either of you. Human, as it is used in everyday speech, is hardly a taxonomic category. For all intents and purposes, you can be thought of as human. Though, sailites do have some distinguishing characteristics. Different advantages, if you will. Really? I don't think eyesight is one of them. Yes. Advantages such as the flakier texture of Seolite earwax. So I've heard. <laughs> Nothing inspires pride in one species quite like speculative evolutionary biology. Perhaps we've had enough of that for today. No. One more. One more. Uh, is this bird a cryptid? Point to the tie she gave me. No. It's the cryptid. Wow. The cryptid? Oh, yes. The small silvery skull shines between your fingers, its beak sharp. Okay, what is this bird? The ape-eyed teratorn, the largest flying avian ever discovered, Whoa. with a wingspan of 11.5 meters. It was thought to have gone extinct 3,500 years ago. Some even doubted the fossils were real. A mutation, they said. Until... Oh... Mutation. All of evolution is a mutation. Until... Until it was sighted by renowned Gottwaldian explorer and naturalist Uwe Plattenkalf in 21. 
Oh, okay, I need to hear more about this sighting. It happened on a botanical expedition into the vast and unexplored Wambau Canyon in southeast Ilmara. Dr. Plattenkalk got separated from his group during a sandstorm. Okay, and Almarao is, and I know she just said the word, but I've already forgotten how she said it. The world's largest canyon system, sweetie. It's a barren waste east of the Er Desert. Ooh. An ancient riverbed completely dried up. What happened? Alone in the blasted desert heat, the doctor wandered eastward, where man hasn't stepped foot in over a thousand years. Since the fall of Pericarnassus. Damn. He was lost without any navigation equipment and desperately low on water. After a day or two, he noticed a bird high in the noon sky. A great black bird. It seemed gargantuan. Every now and then, the bird would dive down to feed on an animal carcass somewhere on the horizon. But by the time Uva got there, the Teratorn had taken off already, and the carcass was picked clean. This happened many times. Damn. Eat the bird. Uva. It's the only way to survive. He was following it? Yes, or rather, hunting. A bird that big has a lot of blood in it, and he was dying of thirst. For many days, Dr. Plottenkalk followed the Teratorn until they reached a great canyon wall where the bird finally landed to rest. I don't know about you guys, but if I was dying of thirst, blood isn't the first thing I would go for, you know? The professor climbed up there with a rock in his hand. He found the bird sleeping with his head tucked under its wing, a great black pile of feathers on the perch. So he approached, slowly squeezing the rock in his fist. Hmm. Watch out. I'm watching. Then... The Teratorn suddenly looked at him. He could see it had eight eyes, four on either side of its skull, like a spider. And the man couldn't move. He was paralyzed, frozen into place with the rock in his hand. Whatever he did, he could not get closer to the bird. Why? The bird was controlling his mind. Huh. It kept him from approaching he could step back, but every time he stepped forward, paralysis. Uva spent three days trying until the bird flew away. An eight-eyed mind-controlling bird. Fuck yes. Absolutely, sweetie. Cryptozoologists have been tracing it ever since, but Wamrao is vast, mysterious, and holds many secrets. I bet. Modern radar telemetry shows great promise. We will confirm this one by the end of the decade, latest. This one I liked. Not only does it have eight eyes and is a living fossil and the largest bird ever to live, it also does mind control. It's like a superhero, Kim. Get with the program. He's sincere. He likes the audacity of it. Oh. Huh. So that was the last anyone ever... Uh Anyone saw of it? Sadly, yes. But there are numerous reports of eight-eyed bird skulls from Il Mara. And then there's the striking resemblance to the Periconassian Imperial Eagle, an ancient heraldic symbol that is hard to pass off as coincidence. The Imperial Eagle, too, had eight eyes. Damn. Not really. It's just stylization. The way they drew eyes. It's not a zoological drawing. Oh, it was just a doodle. Ah, oh, fair enough. Very, very hard. I don't know why you said that, but I'm a little, little uncomfortable. <laughs> this one's very famous. Everyone knows it. People will be looking at that tie on you and thinking, that man is into cryptids. <laughs> so, what else do you want to know? Man, I just can't get enough of these cryptids. I'm glad you like them, but I'm not really one to tell you about all of them. You should ask my husband if you get the chance. He's the real expert. All right, that's all for now, ma'am. Okay. 
There we Nothing go. like the gratitude of a good woman. Now then, what can I do for you? He gives you a gruff pat on the shoulder. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial, but inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. So I checked all the traps. Good. Okay. And? Nothing. Maybe I didn't check them after. No. And one of them was empty. Completely empty? The cryptozoologist's eyes grow wide. Yes, there was nothing in the trap. No locusts. No phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... He rubs his chin. It just means the Insulindian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. Oh, okay. Of course, more clever. Kim, shished. Stop being a hater. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locusts and escaped. This is good news, though we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. That's a great idea. Another trip to the reeds. Yes, that's exactly what it is. What a deft hunter, this phasmid. Of course. <laughs> Be sarcastic. Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture. Mine stands, okay? Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now. And brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachon is yours. Oh, well, that's it's nice to be appreciated, you know? Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft. Oh, there's a point. Somebody may have stolen it. Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Uh, Kim, uh, just give me a second here. I'm going to develop an alternative theory about the missing locusts. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed. As though shaken. Most likely the hands of a young person. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. Or it could be one of the kids from the fishing village. You should ask the red-headed boy, Kuno. Oh, man, I have to talk to him again. Uh, I think a little hooligan called Kuno may have stolen the locusts. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bags? Uh, you don't know this child. Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents, my favorite. It doesn't sound like it's really his favorite. <laughs> oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. Oh yeah, me too. I can feel it. I can feel it. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. Okay, Gary, okay. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Okay. Really, Gary? We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play suzerain tea, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere. It was some kids. I know the little mutants around here. Leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it. Even if it's bugs. He looks at his tea. Morel... It's been fun, really, but I need a bath, and I have deliveries to handle. When this tea is done, I gotta run. Hear that rhymed? No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. Did you know Gary was hiding the armor? Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. I don't know what got into him, officer. Thank you for letting him off easy. He won't forget it. We'll make sure he won't. Okay, I'll get going. Let's talk to Gary here. Seeing as it's the last chance Always that we have. to see an officer of the law. I mean, officers. 
Ooh. <laughs> um, no, that's everything. I've already pursued these. All right. Thank you, Gary. Again? I can't believe this shit. <laughs> okay, okay then. See you around. <laughs> uh, right. So that's that quest done, I think. Oh no, the missing insects case. Find out the real reason for the trap. Local kids might know. Ask Kuno. All right, fine. Okay, we'll get Kuno out the way first. Come on, Kim. We gotta speak to a delinquent. You love them, don't you? Yes, you do. Damn delinquents. Okay. Kuno, where are you, man? There he is. Fuck, does Kuno care? You wouldn't happen to know any... Hold on. Yeah. You wouldn't happen to know anything about any missing locusts. No. Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. <laughs> Continue. So he knows locusts are bugs. Ah... Shut up, C. Now they're going to take you to Lane Prison. That's not so bad. You get some, you know, 4K TV channels and stuff. Not bad. She sounds like she's about to cry out of disappointment at Kuno's newfound <laughs> lameness. Hold on. Now, hold on. No one is lame here. Just tell me what happened. Deny everything, Kuno. You need to lawyer up. Wow. Kuno's not going to say anything without his lawyer present. Oh, you're kidding. There's definitely something going on here. Remember his pig's head shack? You should check it out. Ooh. Yes, I should. Okay, I'm off. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Let's go and check out his shack. Damn. Yeah, I think... I think it might be kids from the fishing village, because they're closer. I can't think of any reason why Kuno would actually want to, like, inconvenience himself by moving away from his, you know, playground. His domain, his kingdom. Doesn't really make much sense. So we'll have to go to the fishing village again sometime. I think. It's crawling with locusts in here! Oh wow, really? <laughs> All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. Ugh. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. The lieutenant looks around, writes something in his notebook, and turns to you. Of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Yes, precisely what I was thinking. Yes. <laughs> I feel we are nearing a real breakthrough. You think an insulindian phasmid is nearby? If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. The phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The phasmid doesn't exist. Okay, Kim, you have a fair point there. I will hold my judgment, however. But what do I know? Yeah, he's... <laughs> uh, you know lots. You're not, you're, not, you're not that dim, Kim. Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The phasmid is impairing your judgment. Okay, we should talk to Kuno about this. Get him to stop. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. Okay. I seem to remember there have been some cash up here that I didn't pick up yet. Let's head up the ladder. Then we'll come back down and talk to Kuno. Hopefully for the last time. Ah, oh, He's an infuriating character. Oh, this is not where I thought I would... Oh no, yeah, this is exactly where I wanted to be, actually. Yeah.
pick up this cash. 90 cents, worth it. Okay, let's get out of here. All those little critters all over the place. You can see the dots moving. And then the little noises. It looks like they're trying to upturn the place to build a society of their own. That's what it sounds like anyway. Scurry, scurry, scurry. Organize, organize, organize. Okay, Kuno, you lying redhead ginger man. I know you took the locusts from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah. Kuro took the bugs. So what? You say you don't give a fuck about bugs. Then you go and build your own bug town. It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. <laughs> locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Stop! She wails from behind the fence then buries her face in her hands. You stop. It's like their fucking night. Local city, night city, city of rage. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. Not too big for his head anyway. Look at the size of that thing. The girl forces herself to watch again. The corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. Hmm. What are you, some kind of artist now? Maybe I am. He says, looking straight in the eye. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. Oh. Hold on, did I hear you right? You just said I. Kuno made Kuno. Kuno says whatever the fuck he wants. There are no rules here, pig. He steps closer. I fucking say I when I wanna. And Kuno when I wanna. Kuno's free. Kuno's free to fucking die, bitch. This is what he sometimes does when things get tense. That's great, Kuno. It's cool to make art. Oh my god, Kuno! He's gonna make you totally lame in, like, three seconds! Don't let him, Kuno! Yo, fuck you, see? Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Wow. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free! He tears at the buttons on of his shirt, trying to rip them open. They don't give way. Kuno made himself into Kuno. <clears throat> Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. Well, don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. A leading silence fills the yard. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. Oh, come on. No one's coming to take you away. Without a word, she disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. Hmm. I need you to stop taking locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. The locusts are bait. I don't give a shit. Oh. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. She was right. The girl's face appears again, above the fence. Just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. I have to ask, what does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuno just <laughs> likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate on shit, build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. He turns his burning face up to the falling rain. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. What's going to happen to the locusts? Kuno's going to let the fucking locusts die. Aw. Okay, now, now that's settled. I'd better be off. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? 
The Insulindian Phasmid. Huh. Oh, that's a... That sounded like a kind of a... Huh. As in, like, curious. He recognises the name. Wait, you know the Insulindian Phasmid? Sorry, what the in Insulindian Phasmid is? We just think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. Let's talk to her. Can we? No, I can't. I can't even talk to her anymore. All right. What's next in that case then? Kuno has promised to stop. Report your findings to the cryptozoologist. I hope I don't have to set them up again. That would suck. That's not my job. I'm a detective. Look at my shoes. These are not setting up traps for potentially imaginary creatures' shoes, are they? No, they are. I'm looking suave and solving crime shoes. So let's just make sure that they're aware of that. Okie dokie. Here he is. Gary's gone. Bye, Gary. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're sceptical, but I have a good feeling about this. I had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop stealing locusts. So it was just a child. He purses his lips, crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. No problem. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> the aging cryptozoologist <laughs> breaks into a hideous coughing fit. He has a 38 degree fever. Oh man. His resilience has given way. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season, when it's warmer. Uh, do I want to restock the... Okay, man, I'm really feeling like this is costing me time on my main investigation. Of course, sweetie. You've helped us so much already. Everyone would understand if you... Uh. We'll get to it eventually. Damn it, maybe I can still restock the, tr the trap for you. You can? <laughs> it's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... Okay, Cam, okay, okay. He wants to see this tale through as much as you. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. Really? It's too much, officer. He starts <laughs> coughing again. What Morel means is we're grateful for your help. She nods to her husband. He's a fresh batch of locals. Wow. Slide right down the funnel. And thank you again. We will definitely mention you. Should this lead to a discovery? Thank I'm you. Talking co-discovery, of course, but uh... just a, a healthy mention, a, 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 my name in the footnotes. That'll do me. Wow, co-discovery. You'd be famous. You'd show them all. But, this does tingle the pleasure center. Hold on a second, <laughs> pleasure center. He did just say that it's not a co-discovery. Did you not just listen to that? I'll get going. Okay. Starting to lose track now. We had stuff complete and then not complete. Uh, or, or new stuff come in or whatever. Hey, what's this? Inland Empire. Uh, volition. What does the Volition do? Gets my morale up and... Hunches and gut feelings. 
dreams and waking life. That's a cool looking thing, that. Alright. I don't have another skill point yet. But I do have some locusts. Oh, goody. Wherever they are. Where, where are they? Or maybe I can't actually interact with them. Fair enough. First resort the trap you left empty before. The trick is to remember which one it was. I remember which one it was. It's the one just past the church. But we'll do that in the next or another episode. It might not be the next one because I want to talk to this guy in the next one, I think, and um, kind of progress that quest as well. But for now, I'm going to end this episode here. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, if you did, you can always hit the like button. If, of course, you're um, wanting to stick around for more of the playthrough or anything else I cover in the future, uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button before you go. And, of course, if you have anything, any thoughts or feelings that you feel the need to express, you can do so in the comments section below. For now, though, take care, and I will catch you in the next video.